So, we will continue with the comparator. So, in this lecture we will try to uh, take up pneumatic comparator. So, till now what all have we seen? We have seen mechanical comparator. Then we saw electrical comparator, optical comparator, optical is the most accurate one, optical comparator. So, these are something which we saw and the last part of the comparator is uh, pneumatic comparator. Of course, hydraulic can be used, but the only problem is hydraulic if you pass through an orifice it is leaking and it will create lot of problems. So, pneumatic operator is the last one which is very important which is used in almost all industries industries for the regular application that means to say at the shop floor level if you want to measure a diameter of a hole or a diameter of a barrel component. So, then what they do is they quickly go for a pneumatic type and the pneumatic type is very easy accurate and it is also sensitive. So, pneumatic comparator pneumatic means air, air is used for measuring the basic principle involved is that the change that is that the changes in the calibration calibrated flow response to the changes in the part feature. For example, when there is a diametrical change then immediately what happens is there is a flow which happens this flow is restricted or it is changed because of that there is a back pressure that back pressure is known. This is achieved by using several methods and it is referred to as pneumatic gauging air gauging or pneumatic metrology. Since pneumatic gauge lends itself to the gauging of several features at once, it has become an indispensable part of production inspection in the industries. This is what I was trying to tell. So, more than mechanical pneumatic here pneumatic you do not have moving parts. So, moment the number of parts are reduced then the repeatability and reliability of the equipment goes very high. That is why today it is people always move to pneumatic, people move to electrical because it is all non-contact and people look for optical. Optical today they use exhaustively laser. The assignment what I gave to you to find out how do they find the distance from earth to moon is by using a laser. Okay. So, optical, electrical, pneumatical becomes are uh, uh, more in usage as compared to that of mechanical because of their uh, number of moving parts is less and they are very easily adaptable to the production environment. Pneumatic metrology is quite popular because of several advantages. It has absence of metal to metal contact. So, there is no wear and tear. High amplification can be done depending upon your circuit, pneumatic circuit what you develop and it is low cost reliable. Absence of metal to metal contact between the gauge and the component being inspected greatly increases the accuracy of measurement. If you go back and see in the dial gauge type, we always said at the dial gauge there is a wear and tear which is happening at the tip. So, this wear and tear leads to an error when you try to measure it okay. and the pneumatic gauges are best suited for inspecting multiple dimensions of a single part setting range from 0.5 millimeter to 1000 millimeter. This is on the higher scale, but generally in a shop floor automobile industry, hydraulic industry, uh, infrastructure building. So, we always go talk about 0.5 accuracy, millimeter accuracy. It is also amenable for online inspection of part on board a machine tool or an equipment. This also can be done very easily with the pneumatic type comparator. What happens in a pneumatical uh, comparator or in a pneumatic uh, comparator, how does the circuit look like? Basically what happens, you try to take air from a compressor. So, whenever you try to take an air through a compressor, what you do is you try to take free air, then you try to compress the air. When you try to compress a free air, there is a possibility that you might have dust. Okay, you might have some amount of water uh, vapor and you might have other foreign particles. So, all these things from the compressor first thing it gets into a filter. So, this filter tries to filter all these things to a large extent. Then 
the from the filter whatever you have uh, filtered there is, there is here you basically a filter will be like you can have uh, a paper filter through which the air is pressurized to move it has re phase the dimensions of the re phase can be changed depending upon your requirement then this is allowed to go to a pressure regulator so in this pressure regulator you try to control what is the pressure you want to have uh, such that you have a uniform flow then what we do is it this after this the, the pneumatic or the air compressed air is passed through a controlled orifice co of a cross sec of an area of c control orifice c not of area c then it passes through a pressure gauge of indicator here it is a regulator here it is an indicator look at the difference here it regulates here it only shows then afterwards it is just then passed through a measuring orifice m not of diameter d so this is controlled orifice this is the measuring orifice once i say measuring orifice through which the air exits the setup and then you have a restriction surface whatever is the restricted surface it can be when you try to do a hole suppose this is the gauge and then you have hole which is there and then you will have a component these are the orifices these are nothing but the measuring orifice m not okay and this is the restricted uh, surface so schematically we have put but in real time you can have it so if it is a cylindrical component then it can the component can rotate or it can be through here it is a blind one which i have drawn okay this is the restricted surface so the distance between the measuring orifice of the dia and the restriction orifice is called l so the surface area of imaginary cylinder that is m is in nothing but this and here the orifice diameter is d and this is the length so this is the zoomed figure of it this is the d whatever is given here so in a correctly designed pneumatic device the ratio of the orifice area is so proportioned that within a limited range of restriction the rate of change of p is uniform so dp by dl we will try to maintain it as constant so the effective area m of the air escapement from the measuring jet is this m nothing but pi into d into l so the sensitivity of a pneumatic gauge can be brought like this so this is dp by p and this is m by c so there is a ratio so we try to put these two in ratios and then we try to take a linear range whichever is there and try to operate our device within that linear range investigations have shown that when the ratio p by p and the area ratio m by c are plotted over a wide range of supply pressures from 15 to 500 uh, kilo newton per meter square the general linear equation may be written in this form linear equation this is nothing but basic linear equation y equal to mx plus c so what we are trying to do is we are trying to take this linear equation bring it here why linear because linear is a place where we can try to dictate or demand what output we want where here k is the intercept of p by p axis so if you go back p by p axis okay k uh, and uh, axis and it is found to be 1.10 go back to the figure 1.10 and b is the slope which varies from 0.4 to 0.6 m is the area which is given pi dl and c is the area of controlled orifice which is m max minus m min which is half m average so differentiating p with respect to m what we get is the sensitivity of the pneumatic system we get so this is nothing but this so now what are we trying to talk about we are trying to talk about the sensitivity how much accurate or what is the resolution how do you improve the resolution is nothing but the sensitivity so with this we we will try to take this uh, equation further however it must be remembered that m is dependent upon c if you go back to the previous figure you see that m this is m not and this is c not so m is dependent on c see since if we work with a range of 0.6 to 
then the average value of m corresponds to p by p is 0 0.7. If you go back and look into the figure p by p 0 0.6 to 0.8 and this is somewhere here. So, we are trying to take this portion okay, 0.7 p by p is 0.7. So, p by p is 0 0.7 1.1. So, we put back into the equation we try to get the value for c. So, this is the ratio for b c then substituting back into the equation ignoring the negative terms. So, d p by d m is nothing but 0.4 times p divided by m average. So, this is nothing but the sensitivity. Now, if you want to look at the overall magnification, the overall magnification is the rate of change of output with respect to input that is magnification. The output variable in the pressure gauge or water column reading today it is only pressure gauge uh, uh, and the input variable is surface displaced is, is surface dis displacement. The three factors combined to produce the overall magnification are pneumatic sensitivity, indicator sensitivity and measuring head sensitivity. So, that is nothing but d p by d m plays one role then d g by d p that is nothing but the output gauge magnification where g is the gauge reading and p is the pressure and the measuring head sensitivity that is the rate of change of m with respect to the displacement of the restricting surface d m by d l. So, this one plus this one plus this one are the three major factors when it is combined try to overall affect the magnification of a pneumatic device. So, the overall magnification is nothing but d g by d l is equal to d p by d m into d g by d p into d m by d l. So, where m is given by this and d m by d l is given by pi d. So, l max minus l min is equal to half. So, in the linear scale of r of the length r provides reading of p over the range of 0 to p then d p by d g is nothing but r by p and this is d g by d l which is the gauge we have combined and we have got, got d g by d l is 0 0.4 times r by l average and what is l this is your l ok this is your l. So, keep that in mind this is your l this is d ok when we said pi d l this is what is d and l ok. So, the uh, in the linear scale of length r which provides the reading of p over the range of 0 to p then d g by d p equal to r by p. So, after this magnification this is what we try to get in this equation. So, to recap what all we saw in this particular uh, chapter wherein which we studied about uh, comparators we first saw what are the functional requirement for comparator then we saw classification of comparator, we saw mechanical type that is dial gauge, uh, Johnson macro, the macro cutter, then we saw sigma macro ca comparator, then we saw mechanical optical me uh, comparator, then LVDT linear variable differential transformer wherein which there was a primary coil, secondary coil and then inducing, then we saw electrical comparator, finally we saw what is pneumatic comparator. So, these are all the different kinds of comparators which are available uh, in the market which is used for measurement and again I repeat comparators are only used for comparing the date the standard with respect to the achieved here. We do not talk about the basic size, we talk about the tolerance alone which is there for example, 40 plus or minus 0.1. So, we try to talk about a range for this and we do not talk uh, uh, the basic size measurement we do not do, we just take only the tolerance range and try to find out whether the component falls within this tolerance ok. So, task to for students, so I would like you to list down, list down 10 different components which components slash feature features which can be measured only by 
pneumatic comparator. Please uh, write, list down the 10 components. These assignments are very useful, you do not have to submit it to me, but these assignments are very useful from the examination point of view. So, 10 different comparators or features, you can take a single component, make 10 features in a single component and say these are the components which can be made, uh, which can be measured only by pneumatic and not by anything else. The next one is list down 5 different applications, 5 different applications where LVDT is used. We have talked about measurement, you can also think any or look for any other things where LVDT is exhaustively used for application. The last one is profile projector. is used in tool makers in tool room or, or in tool room application. Why is the first question and the next question is uh, draw different components for this profile projector usage, for this instrument. Okay. So, these are all just you have to refer some uh, websites or refer some books and start writing it down, because there can be an application based question in your end semester. With that, Thank you very much.